Hi, this is Dean Miller back with another video of the significance of the life of Jesus. This is in Matthew 8, 5 through 13. A Roman officer demonstrates faith. This is an NLT Bible. It says, A Roman officer demonstrates faith. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed in terrible pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my house. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have the authority over my soldiers. I only need to say, go, and they will go, or come, and they will come. And if, my, if I say to my slaves, do this, they will do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. He turned to those who were following him, and he said, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. And I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east and west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and feast in the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, those from whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into our dark, in the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, Go back home, because you believe it has happened. And the young servant was healed at the same hour. So in, in verse 5 it says, When Jesus returned to Capernaum, the Roman officer came and pleaded with him. So the Roman officer could have let many obstacles stand between him and Jesus. Pride, doubt, money, language, distance, time, self-sufficiency, power, and race. But he didn't let any of that happen. But he... he he didn't let that happen. So should we allow these things to block us from our approaches to Jesus? Because a lot of these things keep us from coming to Jesus. The Roman officer or centurion, which some people call it, was a career military officer in the Roman army with control over several soldiers. The Roman soldiers were hated by the Jews for their oppression, control, and ridicule. The Roman officer became close to his servant and displayed great love for his servant in this request. If he he begged Jesus, pleaded with him, displayed a sense of helplessness through his appeal, and knew that he needed someone's help. So this man was desperate. He he loved this this servant he had so much that he would he was willing to go in front of a bunch of Jews and a bunch of followers of, of Jesus, who they knew the Jewish people didn't like the the soldier, but he he gave up all that to go in front of Jesus and beg him to help him with his son or his uh servant. So in verses six and seven it says, "Lord, my servant lies in Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed in terrible pain." Jesus said, "I will come and heal him." So the the young the officer's young servant was paralyzed and in terrible terrible pain. Jesus, knowing this man was a Gentile, still agreed to come and heal him. It was unthinkable for a Jewish teacher to enter a home of a Gentile. Jews thought that they were better because God chose them to give give the law to but should have realized that he was revealing his, the law, his heart, not to them, but through them for the rest of the world to see. So he didn't pick the Jews. He picked the Jews to get the Messiah to come from, but he was trying to use them to show the rest of the world how to be. So in Acts 10, 28 through 29, it says, Taking, Talking to Cornelius, a Roman officer in Caesarea, Peter told them, You know it is against our law for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home, like this, or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I sent for her. Now tell me why you sent for me. So that that's showing that, uh, that Jews were not supposed to go into the house of Gentiles. That was considered to be unclean. So in verses 8 through 9 it says, But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my house. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to go, to say go, and they go, or come, and they come. If I say my, to my slaves, do this, and they will do it. So, the centurion was aware of the Jewish problem of visiting the Gentiles' home. That's why he, he told Jesus that he was, you know, not worthy to have him come. But he knew that Jesus was, you know, the Messiah, and he knew that he had he had the ability to heal people. So Jesus told him, he responded to him to come by saying, you know, I don't want you to have to come all the way to my house. Just say the word, and I know just by you saying, I, I have faith in you just by saying it. 
that he will be healed, that he will. He honestly believed that. That's why he told Jesus that he didn't have to come to his house. He recognized that Jesus could command anything in creation and it would be obeyed because Jesus was God and God was the creation. God made the creation. So he knew that he had that saying that he could do that and it would happen. And he told Jesus, just say the word. And he, he trusted and he believed. So in verses 10 through 12, it says, When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to those who were following him, he said, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen this faith in all of Israel. And I tell you this, that Abraham, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east to west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast of the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, but many Israelites, those from the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into our darkness, into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. So Jesus wasn't surprised. He had been looking for this genuine faith throughout his ministry, and here he found it. Out of all places, it was in the heart of a Gentile. It wasn't a Jewish person. And he was amazed. He turned to the crowd, showing this man as a model for them all. How would you like to be that, where Jesus pointed you out and showed you as an example to all his followers? He then challenged those who, who should know better to believe as this heathen man believed. He pointed to the coming day of the kingdom's full realization when many Gentiles would be gathered from east to west to take their rightful places at the feast of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when they go to heaven. There will be a great wedding feast in heaven when that day comes. But many Israelites who had been given the covenants and the promises and should have known how to enter the kingdom of heaven didn't believe that way. This also shocked the Jews that a Gentile would take their place and it was unimaginable for them. So they they just couldn't believe that you know a Gentile would take their place. They thought just because they were Jewish that they were they had a straight ticket to heaven, which isn't true. So and in verse thirteen it says, Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, Go back home, because you believed it had happened. And it has happened. And the young servant was healed that same hour. So Jesus turned back to the Roman officer and told him to go back because of his faith and that he truly believed that it happened, his servant was healed. And Matthew then recorded that at this very time when Jesus spoke, the servant was healed. So there's really two messages in this in this uh, chapter here. The first message is that if you have faith and you believe in Jesus, that He can do anything for you, and He can move mountains for you if He if He if He chooses to do it for you. So that's the first thing is faith. The second thing is that Jesus was the first time, this is one of the few times or that Jesus came to show that God didn't just pick the Jews to go to heaven, that everybody would go to heaven, even the Gentiles. It doesn't matter what race, man or woman, adult, young, child, what you were, but Jesus is here for us all, Gentile or Jew, he came for us all. A Gentile with strong faith amazed Jesus enough to show his people that just because they were born Jewish, that they didn't have to have a sure way to heaven. Don't limit God by your mindset and your lack of faith. Faithful people of God gathered by faith all over the world will be gathered to feast with the Messiah. Don't be like the New Testament Jewish leaders and cho choose to ignore that Jesus' message was for is for everyone. They thought it was just for them. They didn't think it was for the Gentiles. We all as, have as individuals needs to choose to accept or reject the good news. So we have a choice. We can either accept the news, of, the good news of God, or we can reject it. It's our choice. We all need to have faith like this Roman officer or the leper in the last video I did in our lives. If we have that blind and honest faith, that will land us in the promised land. I know for years that me personally, I wandered around the wilderness just like the Israelites did in Exodus. And I finally realized without Jesus, I would never find that promised land. You know, it took me a long time. I quit going to church probably when I was 17 or 18 years old. And I started going back probably about seven or eight years ago. And it it's definitely made a difference in my life. And I'm not too proud to get down on my knees just like the people who need something they're looking for and cannot find it. You know, I'll, I'll get down on my knees just like they did. When you find Jesus like I did, there will be a certain peace in you that nobody can take away. Since I found Jesus, I have a, a piece in me that it's 
It's been nothing like before. I have no more anxiety about death like I used to have. I used to sit there and worry about what happened to me when I died. All that went away when I found Jesus. And I know there's a lot of people who know me, you know, and seen some of the things I've done in the past. Yeah, I'm not perfect, and I'm still not perfect. But I'm trying to work my way there, trying to do the best that I can and, and share the, world, the word. And I'm not ashamed anymore to talk to people about God. The other day I was at work talking to people about God. I seen a couple of people looking at me, you know, kind of funny. And it didn't matter to me because I'm not ashamed of it. You know, once I felt that way, I'll never go back to the way I felt before. Because once I found Jesus, I, there's nothing that can change that for me. I have a joy in my heart, finally, that I was looking for for a long time. And that's what these people who go out and search for these things, they go and get pets and animals and jump from girl to girl or man to man looking for that thing they're missing. And it's right here in this Bible. Let's pick up this Bible and read it. Start talking to other people about God because iron sharpens iron. And the more you start talking to other Christians, the better you'll feel. The more you'll start living a better way. And you're not going to be perfect. And you don't have to be perfect. But just have that faith like this the leper did when he got healed. And have faith like this Roman officer. You know, these are two people that Jesus should have turned away. You know, the Roman officer was one that persecuted the Jews and was ridiculing them and that. And... They're the ones that actually crucified Jesus was the Roman officers. But he still chose to help them, just like the leper. He wasn't supposed to touch them because he was unclean, but he did anyway. So if he can do that with them type of people, there's nothing that we, we've done in our life that we can't be ashamed of if we confess our sins to Jesus. So that's all I ask for you guys to do is just find it in your heart. Ask Jesus to forgive you, and I'll tell you what, it'll make a big difference in your life. Thank you for listening to my videos and comment in the comment sections. Uh, like my videos and subscribe to my videos on YouTube. And please share this video for everyone to hear. Thank you. Amen.